one thing I wanted to say, it's just a pretty exciting time to be a Badger, obviously, with the women's hockey team and just everything. I I've been, uh, haven't followed it too carefully, but I think isn't our women's um, tennis team doing better than ever? Like, they're, it's incredible. And we just had a great wrestling performances. Um, swimming, really good, too. Indoor track and field, things are pumping. Not to mention all the other exciting changes that are happening. And uh, I'm really excited, too, even though their season has ended, uh, the women's basketball. I think Coach Mosley's amazing. I think we're finally, you know, when I first got here, it was probably more competitive, and it's kind of been in the uh, um, in an unhappy zone for a long time, but it's going now. I know that this isn't really about what my feelings are about our sports here, but I'm psyched. I don't think we've ever been in a better position here. Same old crappy weather, though. So. Yeah, I, interesting. Uh, Jason Gay, I don't know if you know who that is, but he's a Badger who is the um, – sports columnist for the Wall Street Journal and uh, you know he's always pumping the Badgers and he's also a humor columnist he said there's nothing more cold on earth than being a parent and youth sports in the north outdoor sports and especially Little League and I was just thinking about what Yvette was saying but don't forget rowing and we just had spring break and it was brutal I will say Maria Pianka, who's our administrator, came out for practice, and she texted me hours later and said, I'm still cold. And I uh, was telling Yvette, I stand up in the launch. The launch is the power boat you're driving. And you think, well, that's not a good idea. Yeah, but it keeps you warmer. You just literally do this the whole time. So, and that's something, Jabo, my predecessor, told me this. And, you know, he's all sorts of interesting things that I still keep with me. And I asked him years later, he goes, yeah, I miss the team and I miss the competitive part of it but man I do not miss those cold mornings and I'm sure I'll say the same when I'm done too but we trained down at the Rock River and uh, I was worried about it because there was quote high water high water down there is not they quote flooding flooding you see pictures of Los Angeles and houses and trees it's not like that it's just a little higher and you can't have a wake but it worked out really well and it wasn't much of a problem and we were able to row quite a bit. But it's a little more in the survival mode than in the uh, thriving. Like, you're just out there rowing. You can't really do too much or drill too much because it's cold. Just think if you're, all right, we got a basketball practice, but it's 30 degrees in the gym. It's going to be hard to break down and do much drilling. But still, it was rowing. I think we got 70 or 80 miles. Ideally, over that week, you'd put 110 or 120. So it's, but it was big and a nice, uh, change and it's morale is high when it's cold I found because everybody's all fired up blood is rushing and we also have the famous burn barrel which is the most exciting thing essentially just a trash can with wood in it but it's the campfire where everybody gathers around and that's where we start in the morning it doesn't take much to please people young men when it's cold but it's it true is a true art to get kids to go to Edgerton Wisconsin at spring break when they're peers and other students are going to Florida and try to convince them that it's really cool and they're having a good time. So in that, I'm proud. I think we, unless they're absolutely uh, hiding it from me, which I don't think they are, I think we've, we've managed to achieve that. Can you talk a little bit more about that part of things? Rowing is obviously a super team sport. But Correct. Does that help that you're, you're rowing 26 to 2 years in? Is it a bonding thing that kind of makes your team go get a little bit? There's no question the suffering aspect of it is is high, and uh, that absolutely. It, we always talk about, though, how rowing is, when you're in an eight, for example, it's such a tight unit, and you want everybody to be obviously mixing and matching precisely, and each person in the right place. But it's mainly an individual sport in the sense that you, uh, we're always having to focus on your own development all the time not to the exclusion of your teammates, but the most important contribution you can make to the team, and this is true of just about any team sport, is the better you are, the better the team is. So that's mainly what they focus on. But of course, when they're in a, a group uh, freezing, sort of uncomfortable situation, there's definitely a tremendous amount of bonding that happens. And you can see it when they go out to meals afterward. They eat ravenously, as you can imagine, when it's cold. It's fun to watch, actually. I 
I still have that appetite. Unfortunately, I don't burn the calories. So I blame my wife for the 70 pounds I've gained since I stopped rowing. Gosh. And she says, oh, really? I chain you to the plate? But she's a good cook, and I just keep eating. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's the quintessential archi archetype of what you want. And uh, apart from being a great person, you know, he's uh, all the biometrics of a rower. Had the fantastic high school uh, background. You look at was recruited to play all over for basketball at at the most of the. I don't know what's the name of the conference like that. Uh, that White Waters End is it WIAC or something? Yeah, in at those schools. And, but chose rowing. And uh, part of it is he wanted to come to University of Wisconsin. And he's been an amazing help. And the one thing he's really done is this outreach with uh, high school ADs. Because uh, unlike most other sports, kids aren't vetted to rowing, certainly not around here. So you don't realize their guys are gifted. Two of our top novices, neither one of them is likely but they're as good as we've had in years. One did a little track and field throwing events. He's about 6'2 from Nina. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a younger guy as hard as that kid already. He's already an elite puller, and he's rode five or six months. And then another kid is about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, who's cross country from down to Chicago. Very different personality than the other kid, but he'd be the top you know, American recruit with what he can do on the rowing machine. In five months, that means they're out there. They're just hard to find. And uh, by Adam is really spearheading that, getting kids to come to our camps, get them into rowing earlier, a lot earlier, essentially creating our own recruits. So, which is good in some ways, because then there's no competition for those guys. They just want to come here, as opposed to, I see Danny over there, a tennis coach. A any guy that he sees out there that he wants to uh, recruit, it's not like he's the only one. So. It's not easy, where it's a little easier in that way for us, that we can create our own hidden asset and uh, develop them. Coach Meyer, you know, who was a coach here for a long time, he just called me. And they had, uh, I noticed, though, in the Ohio, we're downstream from the uh, big Norfolk Southern. southern uh, I, <laughs> I don't think we're in the threat zone. So that's good. Well, I thought I would point that out right away. And, um, but the, you can either row on the High River or the Muskie River, which is right in town. And there's some uh, positives and negatives of that. And being from here, though, when a coach calls me and tells me the conditions, and it would be like the field or the courts are kind of off, it wouldn't bother me because that's just the way we do it. It's outdoor sport in a changing, so I'm excited about it. But, and it's a bus trip, which for us is fairly unusual. And that's normal for a lot of places, but not for us. And you can bond. But as far as where, which course we're going to be, I don't know. Guys just want to get on pole, basically. And now it, we have two weeks before we go to California, which uh, last year we only had one, which is pretty tough when you make this drive. And then you uh, would come back and leave on Thursday for California. So this, And maybe the lake will be open. I don't know. We're on, what, March 20th? It looks like 10 days to me at least. So. I know that uh, some of the the guys have been in. What what is the name of that? Is it Open Doors or right? I know that they've availed themselves to that and uh, has some little jobs, I think. And uh, it's cool. I Me, mean, I've always been. I, I always thought it was bizarre that kids would sign away their name and image, which they used to, and it was controlled by some random body when no other students had to do that. So I'm all for it. But as far as big time. No, not even. Uh, my guess is mostly that is mostly football and basketball, but there's probably volleyball and hockey. I say go for it. You know, your college uh, shelf life as athlete is pretty short, so take advantage of it. But I know guys have, you know, on a very small level. And I keep thinking about it and thinking about what alums might be interested in doing it, but just thinking. 
no one's made any moves. I don't think we can't really do anything about it. It has to be come from the outside. So, but I think it's cool. It certainly helps. There's no question. Uh, absolutely, especially with the novice guys, you know, international guys. They, they they want everything, all of it, a full ride, and that money, and you know, the what what do you call that extra that's tacked on a scholarship? Not cost of living, but it's whatever it is. They want it all, so those guys are out of the picture, which you know most of our competitors are international, so almost all of them. We're the the little old American guys that could, so. But we'll take anybody that's any good. I don't care where they're from. Uh, one more completely random. Uh, a former rally, Chris Gessler, he was a guy that impacted your program a lot. Did you guys even go to Amsterdam? So you can talk a little bit about him. I know. Yeah, my first year here, I, I got here in the fall of 94, and Chris was a, entering his senior year. So I knew him from that even though I really didn't have much to do with the upper class at that point. And then he came on to be uh, second assistant, 99-2000 and 2000-2001. And man, talk about a free spirit, but super smart. And I know he, w he took a while to get his mechanical engineering PhD, and that was what he really wanted to do. You know, uh, teaching and coaching are pretty similar, but that's what he really wanted to do. And I didn't realize m many of the guys on my team had him as a professor and loved him, said he was the best they ever had. It's still a little shocking, to be honest with you. And uh, I remember seeing him last year, about a, year, a little less than a year ago, and he, he was just describing his ailment, and just matter of fact, kind of the way an engineer would. Well, this is what's happening, and this one, you know, uh, I, uh, life expectation of someone with this is usually six months, but I'm confident, and he just spoke just like I'm speaking. It's unbelievable how courageous he was. You don't always know that kind of thing. I didn't know him that well. I knew him well, but not like that. Guy was a profile in courage. It's unbelievable how well he handled it. And, and I did not see him at the very last days, but the people that did said that's the way he was all the way to the end, which is, I'm not like that. I don't have that kind of courage. I'd be sucking my thumb somewhere. So that, that was amazing. You guys have to have some questions. We have other people here that you can't see. Come on, ask a question. Um, Tennis will be easy to ask about, but rowing maybe not. That's a good question. The uh, um, I've always been uh, muted about expectations, which is ironic because I have a uncontrollable big mouth sometimes and it's the only time I've ever really got in trouble for anything is because I talk too much but when it comes to expectations I'm usually it part of it is because of the kind of program we have and it's so development oriented um, guys just literally get better in a month or two when most of the rowing they've ever done is here and usually a guy if he, it's his junior year is usually when they start breaking out we have one fifth year um, you know, that's taking a COVID year, and he's already good, but we have a lot of young guys. But rowing is, times matter just like they do in swimming or uh, track and field, and you can refer to them. In men's rowing, if you can go in the men's eight, sub 540, you're gonna be competitive to make a grand final, and a grand final is six boats. There's more boats than that in the competition, but those are the ones that have a chance to win a medal. And if you can be, he, Easily under 540, you got a shot. And last year, we were right on it. We were 540, 541. So I think this boat can be better. And we don't have a lot of depth. I've said this before that it's funny. There's a lot of message boards and all come out. And for whatever reason, everything I say gets really broken down. Like, what's he saying? Or he's a fool or an idiot. Or what's he talking about? I'm going to explain it again. Why, not to you, because you guys, you don't know. The, why we have three juniors, because COVID year, we could only have the people that were recruited. And there was only eight of them, two of whom were coxswains, and they're done. So that takes you to six. And of those six, three made it this far, which is the kind of attrition that isn't unusual. So um, anyway, that's why we have three guys. And it's kind of, it's created this, 
whole, really. Ironically, if I had more guys like those three, because they're all good. That's, un that's un unheard of, that every single guy in a class, granted there's only three, are all good. Usually there's a much different hierarchy, but that has affected us in our depth. It kind of drops off a cliff, and that's where we need those freshmen. And the freshmen are clueless in all the best ways. And I love how, uh, okay, they just, especially the kids that didn't row in high school, they don't know anything. And they're not bound by expectations. All they know is college rowing because that's all they've ever seen. The problem with a lot of our high school recruits is as earnest and willing as they are, their scores and times on the rowing machine in particular that they think were great, like it would be in any time sport. Oh, wow, you know, you break two minutes on the 800. That's really good for running. Huh, not in college, it's not. And it's the same in rowing. And they're mostly so earnest. And they can often, uh, the best of our high school kids realize that quickly and get better. But all three of those guys, juniors, rode in high school, two of whom rode for one of our alums, his coach in uh, D.C., Joe McMullen, from the class of uh, 2008. So anyway, that's why I'm just putting it out there, why we only have three. Someone claimed it was turmoil. No, well, I guess if you called the pandemic, which, you know, Affected, in, that was turmoil, not exclusively our turmoil, but. You thought you had a good team, so you, yes. uh, you let the guys go out who maybe didn't have Well, the, Breck Duncan is uh, fifth year, and uh, he came, at, I don't even remember how he heard about it. He was from Brookfield Central. We have two guys from Brookfield Central who are actually really good. Neither rode in high school, and Breck, he, as far as, his physicality for not a big guy. He's not a growing big guy. 6'3", maybe 190. But his uh, physical attributes, and I bet his uptake of VO2 max, which is an important thing in rowing, is probably close to eight liters, which is ultra elite, ultra. And I've had a lot of guys here. And he, he doesn't experience pain like normal people, like anybody probably I've ever seen. And uh, he's... Uh, He's the leader on the rowing machine, which is especially important. It, because you look at him, yeah, he kind of looks like a normal guy. And then we have uh, other seniors like Joey Cleary, who's also a senior, who uh, um, he's from Brookfield Central, too. And uh, he's had a bit of an injury, but he's back. But he's exceptionally good. Dylan Green is really our top junior. And uh, Back to Breck, though, it was interesting. He came from a rowing background, but he never rowed. His father rowed at Yale and beat in a boat against me that won the national championship in 1982. Thanks, Breck's dad. And Breck's grandfather rowed at Yale. Breck's great-grandfather rowed at Yale. But he was never exposed to rowing as a kid, which I, I'm, I commend that, the parents for that because often it's you know must-do sport parents did. And then Dylan Green's dad and mom rode, and he only rode a year just sculling in high school. He's got a brother at Brown rowing. He's about six foot six and a very interesting character, but man, is he good. His dad was uh, on the Olympic team, I think, in 92 for rowing. And mom it, rode at Minnesota, but he's done exceptionally well. Um, God, I only see these guys every single day. And I remember I used to joke about my predecessor, Jabbo, and to him. I said, what, you can't remember names? What's wrong with you? And I thought I would never be like that. And now I can't even remember my own son's names, let alone guys on the team. But um, the uh, uh, a couple of really good sophomores, too. So one is uh, Will Klipstein, who's from Edgewood, actually, and he didn't row in high school. Another one, Dylan Canishu, is from, uh, um, he's a runner, and uh, but was too big to run. He's probably six foot five, two ten. His brother, though, runs a 347, 1500. So that's impressive. So, all right, um, so just that alone, I'll give a guy a chance. Oh, your brother's that good? Okay, sounds good. Um, Coxon wise, we are, the, the, the guys that steer the boat, we are in a strong place. Both are going to come back for a fifth year. One is Jonah Rain. He'll be the first boat coxswain. Now, Jonah's twin sister, Rachel, is the women's coxswain, twice uh, NCAA titleist at Texas. And so I'm constantly giving Jonah grief. I'm going, Jonah, I think you're pretty good, but I'm still not convinced you're the best coxswain in your own family. 
and his mom and sister, other sister, also Coxon. And then Grayson Van Loo, who's also from Brookfield Central. They're both coming back next year. Our Coxons are. And Jonah had to wait kind of as a Coxon and waiting behind last year's varsity Coxon, who went directly from here to be the Coxon of the U.S. men's aid at the World Championships and hopefully is on track to be in the Olympics. So we're doing quite well in that front. I think part of it is because of the – this isn't Princeton that has a lake built by Andrew Carnegie for rowing, which is close to an, as close to an indoor course as you could get. This is a wilder, woolier place to row, and it makes Coxons exceptionally good because you have to learn to work with a lot of boats in tough conditions. So.